Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. My name is Wade Nimmer and today we're going to take a look at one of those special clubs. Uh, we've had a look at traditional clubs, we've seen the e-clubs, but today we will be looking at the uh, eco clubs. With us today I have John Weiss. John Weiss, welcome. Thank you, thanks for having me. My pleasure. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, to begin with, I'm married. My wife, uh, Christine McDonald, is in real estate and uh, I am in uh, electronics, professional electronics, and uh, I have three children, uh, all adults, uh, school teacher, uh, electronics, and, a, uh, and an education uh, guru. Uh, my family, uh, you know, we grew up in California. I've uh, been in business 38 years and uh, uh, joined Rotary in 2001 and uh, wanted to make a difference in my community. Uh, served as club president first time in 2009 and 10 for the Rotary Club of Morro Bay. And then I was, uh, in my club we, we had a lot of members come in and so uh, the incoming district governor, Deepa Willingham, asked me about uh, if I wanted to serve at the district level. Hadn't considered it, but uh, I liked the people involved so I w got involved with that and then I was asked to uh, charter an eco Rotary Club and uh, didn't know exactly what it was, but uh, investigated. There were two clubs in the world, and uh, so uh, managed to do that in the 11th month and uh, 16th day of a one-year calendar, <laughs> and uh, now involved with uh, Rotary coming in as district governor 2017-2018. That's right, very good. So tell us a little bit about the, uh, the Eco Club and you chartering that. Uh, I believe the first one was the Morro Bay, is that correct? Or five cities? Morro Bay is the first one that Morrow I was Bay. involved with chartering in our district. And to give you a little background about the Eco Rotary Clubs that were in existence, uh, one is in Minnesota, one is in Florida. Its uh, emphasis was to get together in a local restaurant and then they talked about environmental issues, had projects, got involved with uh, uh, a variety of uh, gardening and, and uh, I think one was involved with a zoo. Um, so that was kind of the background of where we started. Um, I think with any organization you need to find the needs of, of the community and uh, the members. It is a member driven organization, it is a, a true rotary club, but its emphasis is on uh, serving the community as in adopting parks, uh, an education process, talking about zero waste, something I was not familiar with. I've learned quite a bit about that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, we've been involved with pollinator gardens. Um, I know that you've been involved with the uh, uh, project at Camp Keep, and we came and volunteered some of our time to help. And it's a matter of just having some fun, getting together with others that, that care about the environment. And, uh, you know, among the fun things we do is pull weeds and plant plants and, uh, you know, cultivate uh, plants and also education. So it's been a lot of fun. Very good. Now, the club that you actually started, you, you were first, you said you were president of the Morro Bay Club in right. 2009? 2009 and 10. Then I served uh, in um, DIPA's year uh, on the membership committee, and I was a club extension uh, chair. And we managed to put everything together. It did take a while. Uh, because you have to have at least 25 members. We chartered with 27. Uh, we actually chartered um, officially with RI on June 16th. We had our charter night on June 23rd, 2011. And um, so that's kind of how we got started. So you were actually president two times in a matter of a few years then? Yes. In fact, you were the one who informed me. <laughs> well, I, I didn't bring it up because of that. But. <laughs> well, I, I, it's something I will never forget because when I uh, was asked to charter the club, I didn't know that you had to have a, uh, a president that was qualified just like any other Rotary Club. And in the Rotary world, the... Uh, the foundation of, of why Rotary is successful is the training that they provide to their club president. And we didn't have anybody that had uh, club president experience other than myself. And out of the 27 members, only um, three of them had really any Rotary experience. So it was a very uh, enlightening experience. And uh, I, I was informed that in June that I would be uh, the charter club president uh, July 1st. Got it. Okay, uh, very good then. 
I guess that got you prepared for being the governor, coming in as a governor. So was that part of, uh, I would say, the process you used in selecting that path? You know, what's interesting, and that's a great question. When I came into Rotary, uh, first of all, to give you a little background, my business, 38 years in business, going back 15 years, I'm still in business, 25 years, and many of my other employees were very much uh, generous in giving uh, their time to the community, Civil Air Patrol, City Council, um, search and rescue, police volunteer. I just wanted to give back to the community. So when I joined, I had no idea that I would end up in a leadership position within Rotary. After I was in Rotary, I was got involved with the Chamber of Commerce. I was the president of the Chamber of Commerce for three years. Following that little stint, um, I agreed to be club president, not really understanding what I was getting into, but Rotary gives such great training and uh, then I was asked by DEPA to get involved with uh, membership during your year as governor. I was the Interact Chair, which is a youth program um, for high school aged um, Rotarians. And then uh, for the following governor, Frank Ortiz, I was uh, involved with youth service for the district, also for Jack, and then for Loretta membership. So I really didn't have a great uh, ambition to be district governor, um, but it does grow on you as you as you well know, and it's about serving others and having fun and trying to make a difference in your community, and so that's kind of where I have fallen into. Great. So tell us a little bit about this uh, eco club. When I, I we're talking about it, give me an example of uh, what the members are like. What type of members have you attracted to this club? Well, and, and that's a great question. Um, in a traditional Rotary Club, they tend to have, uh, they're older. The, uh, the Eco Club has had great appeal to all ages. And I'll give you an example. Um, we, we're, we have probably an even uh, distribution of ages between the ages of 30 to in the 60s. And it's spread pretty evenly, which is a little unusual for most service clubs because we, we do have a very strong, um, in fact we have some members that are actually under 30 now that I think about it. So, um, you know, that part has been, been fascinating. Uh, there is an interest in the, in the environment. We have some very strong uh, and very knowledgeable people about the environment and the fact that the way we are currently doing things as a society are not sustainable. We have to make some changes. And so the Eco Rotary Club, one of the tenets of what the Eco Rotary Club does is to help educate the, the community. Um, we have a uh, Eco Fair and there, there were, in our first year, we had 20 tables, each one talking about various aspects of the environment or recycling or reusing. Uh, we can't continue to operate the way we are because it, we're too wasteful. Now, I've seen you at a couple of events where you actually put on the event assisting them with having what's called zero waste. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about those projects? I would love to, and that is something that I've learned. It wasn't something that I knew about, but we have some experts in our club. And basically, um, and again, this gets back to the sustainability of our society. We are going to run out of landfill space if we simply take all of our trash and we bury it. Not only that, but when you bury trash in the ground, uh, you end up with methane gas. Methane gas is lethal, it, it kills, and, and it's dangerous. So with zero waste, you actually are, rem you're, you're, key, you're, you're diverting about 85 to 90% of the trash to something that is friendly to the environment. You're taking uh, the recyclable products, paper, cans, bottles, those get recycled, we understand that. But you also take food waste and, and, and again this is something that is really good for the environment because it is the food waste where most of the methane gas is created when it is buried. And so you end up with a much smaller amount of trash, and the idea is to end up with zero waste and zero trash. Um, what's interesting is that you can mix food products with paper products and they will break down. So you don't even have to recycle paper products when you do zero waste properly. 
Got it. Now, I've heard the term uh, composting or compostable. Is that the term that you use for that process? Well, that's, that is a part of that process. In fact, we were invited to, and one of the charter members of our club was involved with uh, zero waste at the Dairy Creek Golf Course. And that involved uh, composting bins and worms and the taking of uh, the compostable product. And what they did with that is they also uh, mixed it and they had a, and they do have, they have an ability to take that waste and it becomes liquefied and they're able to spray it on the greens and it reduces the amount of water that is required by 60%, which is huge. It also allows them to not have to use uh, fertilizers or pesticides that, uh, again, end up going into the water table. And it was funded in part by the estuary, uh, even though this golf course is about 10 miles from the ocean, when you use pesticides on the grass, it ends up in the ground and then it ends up in the water table. So even though we may not give a lot of thought to a remote golf course that's 10 years or 10 miles away, uh, the zero waste really is super for the environment and it is a model for where we should go with golf courses and other uh, users of fertilizer, pesticides, and water. Great. Uh, let's jump into some of these pictures. I see you brought a few pictures with you. Um, the first picture we have shows uh, your group. Uh, I believe this is a, a chartering group of your club? It is. And, and there were, on the two ends are the club presidents that were um, sponsoring uh, club presidents for the, uh, for the club. Uh, Morro Bay and, and Los Osos uh, were the uh, principal chartering uh, clubs. Uh, you also see, uh, at the time, District Governor uh, Deepa Willingham, who again is very mindful of the environment, and I know you'll have her as a guest or have already uh, on her school, which again is also mindful of having a footprint that is uh, very environmentally friendly. And there are a lot of passionate people. One of one of the individuals, um, her email address has. Um, her name recycles. So, I mean, <laughs> this is a very unique group that is very interested in volunteering their time to help the environment. Great. Let's uh, talk about the two sponsoring people. Uh, give them a little plug. So you have the Morro Bay Club and you have the Los Osos Club represented there, right? Yes. Uh, uh, Mike Pond was the club president following my year and very supportive. And it was uh, a very good year uh, for the club and uh, Dick McCohen, who was the uh, club president for Los Osos. And again, it's great to have that kind of support. Um, uh, we're all working together, trying to help each other. Very good. The next picture we have shows, I believe, a before picture of what the, one of our projects that we worked on at Camp Keep, right? It is. And again, it's about having fun, helping the environment. Camp Keep is a uh, educational center for, um, school-aged children, and they learn about um, uh, animal life and the environment. And uh, I know that there were several Rotary Clubs and yourself that were very involved with the design and with the implementation. And it was just a lot of fun. Uh, the second picture, um, I got to operate a, <laughs> uh, um, a mini bulldozer uh, yeah, which I've never done before, and again, it was a new experience, but it was a blast. Although I was covered from head to toe with dirt. <laughs> you did a very good job of picking that up, by the way. I, I saw a future in you there as a governor because you jumped right on without any experience and took right over on that job. So nice job on that one. Thank you. The next picture we have shows uh, the after picture, correct, of the... Yes. Yeah, and it, it's amazing how it all transformed, came together. And it is a, just absolutely a fun thing to, to get people together um, in a situation where we're all getting along. And I think one of the things that I have found with uh, some very good rotary projects is you get together and you do things and there is no criticism. Everyone just finds a better way of doing things and getting things together. In fact, um, my wife and I were involved with a home build in Mexico 
and we had never built a home, and yet we were uh, just amazed at the fellowship that came together by doing this uh, project. Now, do you see that happening or occurring more often in this eco club since you're doing projects more specific like this? I do, and and you know it's interesting because I came in as the leader of this organization with not a very strong environmental background, other than uh, I do remember in one of the individuals that came into and I was uh, able to bring into the club who was very involved with uh, recycling, and I have a business, and we used to have a dumpster behind the store that got filled up with trash every single week, overflowing. And so um, what happened is we were offered an opportunity to have a recycling container. I asked them how large they came, and they had a three-yard container, which I can stand in. It's huge. <laughs> and the cost was five bucks a month. Mm. And so I said, well, that's what I'd like. We actually fill up the recycling dumpster to the top. I have to get in there sometimes and, and jump on it to bring it down so we can put more recycling material. And our other dumpster um, is one-fourth full at the most of trash. And uh, so again, it's, it's fun to do things in an environmental way. And uh, I, I did, wouldn't have seen myself getting involved. But looking at the members of our club with their background and their knowledge, um, I was introduced to zero waste. I've been introduced to composting. We've gone to landfills and see what they do at a landfill. Uh, we've seen, we had this eco fair, which brought people together. Um, we've been involved with Earth Day. Uh, we have beach cleanups. We've involved Interact and Rotaract, uh, which are high school and then um, young professional uh, aged uh, Rotarians. And um, it's just, a, it's, a, it's a blast. Great, great. We have another picture showing the same fire pit area with a dome in the background. Now, have you spent any time inside that dome to see what kind of uh, eco well, projects they show? Actually, they also serve lunch there, so I do remember <laughs> the I remember the dome, and I remember having a really nice lunch and having fun and fellowship with uh, other Rotarians. Um, but it is it is clearly an educational uh, center, and I'm very proud to have been able to contribute um, in some way to that yeah. and I happen to know the one of the leaders of the, of the group and they're just, they're very passionate about helping students. They really are, right. Next picture you have, um, you're gonna have to go over this one. I have no idea what this one is. This is the zero waste. These are the worm, the, these are the worm bins that we <laughs> okay. uh, helped uh, put in place at the local golf course. And these were Rotarians that just, we just like kind of all came together and again, an area I was not knowledgeable uh, at the time I started, but now I can tell you how it came together, what was done, how it works, and uh, the difference that it's making in our environment. Great, great. Next picture uh, shows Bayshore Bluffs Adopt the Park. Tell us a little bit about that project. Yes, in fact, our uh, one of our uh, charter members, uh, Taylor Newton, uh, had suggested that we should adopt this park. Uh, this park is four acres, and it's overlooking a bluff in Morro Bay, um, and it was in need of a attention. And so we, we did adopt the park. The city was grateful, very grateful for our effort. They put a sign in the park that uh, has our, an acknowledgement of, of our effort there. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of our club for doing that. Uh, the Morro Bay Club adopted a park, but it took them 60 years to get to that point. Wow. This one was adopted in the first year. Wow, it is amazing. Good for you. Yeah. The poster that we see here shows, I guess, a, a special event that you're having, or is that a... Um, this was, when we got started, um, I wanted to communicate in a, in a clear way what our club was about. And at this time, this was, this was the... Uh, blueprint for zero waste at the golf course. Uh -huh. So the top picture was um, a photo of that, and then they also had some um, liquefied um, bins that uh, they used to spray. And it actually, uh, the apparatus actually takes the, the liquid and pumps it to the greens of the golf course. So they, and it, they, the greens end up greener, use less water, don't have to use pesticides, 
Um, and it also not only helps the environment in that way, but one of the great expenses of obtaining water on a golf course is the actual electricity used to pump the water to the different parts of the golf course. So if you're using less water, you're using less electricity. Less energy also. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a good concept. Didn't think about that one. We have another picture here showing, looks like a special event that you have. Uh, that was the event that I actually attended. Uh, how about talking about that one there? Well, it's interesting. Um, thank you for asking the question. It was, uh, this is a very creative group, a very artistic group. And um, one of the ways that they raise money is to recycle items and auction them. So people would take things that they would otherwise have no purpose for, bring it and uh, get a donation, and then someone else uses it that, that, can, that, that wants it. And so it's, uh, it was a mechanism for the club to raise a few, few uh, dollars uh, to do the things that we do in educating the community and, and helping uh, with that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. More people should be doing that. I agree. The, the, la the last one I have is uh, your logo. I think that's an outstanding logo. I haven't seen it before. It's actually the first time I've seen it was uh, at this presentation. Uh, I like it. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about how it was developed and who did that? Well, there's, there was a local uh, printing company, uh, Hay Printing, and uh, Mary Hay is a, uh, a good friend and, a, and a, uh, very familiar with how to do graphic design. She designed this uh, logo. Um, it is something that the, the club has uh, utilized in all the things that we, you know, talk about. And the, the whole idea is, again, just the recycling, the reusing, and the repurposing of, of various things. Um, it takes a lot of energy to, to, to manufacture something. So if you can reuse it, it uh, saves our environment a lot. Very true. Now, we have two uh, actual eco clubs in our district, uh, the Morro Bay and the Five Cities. Are they very similar in their projects and their goals and visions? They are similar, although the uh, Five Cities Club is uh, more project driven uh, as far as parks and, and that which they've adopted. The uh, Morro Bay Club is more geared towards education. Uh, the eco fair being an example of that. The purpose of the eco fair was to just get the word out, and they have really done a great job. They had um, some some kids programs around the environment, and uh, so they're they're similar. And we do support each other with our various events, but I would say there was a slight difference in the way they uh, are. Uh, a different emphasis. In the picture that you were looking at earlier, the eco store, several of the people in that picture are from the Five Cities right. Club, so they do come and support our events. We support their events, and I think that's one of the great um, synergies that uh, Rotary brings to the table is the fact that we partner and do things together as clubs as well as within a district, then districts, and then a zone. So. Right, right. Now, there are probably in that area of Five Cities, Pismo area, up to Morro Bay, a good dozen clubs there. Do they cooperate with your uh, with the eco clubs also? Um, they do, and you know one of the um, challenges of any event that any organization puts on is how are you going to deal with the trash? And if you have zero waste, first of all, you save in the amount that has to go to the dump. Instead of everything going to the dump, it becomes a very small amount. So as a result, uh, we've partnered with the local um, uh, trash company, and they have um, been very accommodating of what we're doing, uh, primarily because it reduces the amount of space that these events can, you know, take. And um, and so a lot and a lot of the events in the five cities area, five cities area has a lot of events. Uh, which um, need to have the, the waste uh, dealt with. And so we help and make a difference. That is, that is good. I heard an interesting uh, program you have uh, that was done by Taylor, I believe. It was called uh, the Gorilla Gardeners. You want to tell us a little bit about that program? 
Well, I, I can tell you a little bit about it. Um, first of all, the, the Gorilla Gardeners um, are um, young adults that are uh, in need of some direction. Uh, Taylor and his board provide that direction. Uh, they talk a lot about accountability and responsibility. And they also have a component of community service, which they're required to do as part of that organization being a member. And the more uh, volunteer time you put in, um, the better the organization is. So the Gorilla Gardeners um, have made a huge difference in the community and that they have um, done a lot of landscaping uh, with very little water consumption or, 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 or none required. They also do zero wasted events. And they've just, they've, they've made a, a huge difference in the community, but more importantly, the members of that club have, uh, have made a difference in the community and for themselves. And Rotary has been a partner. Rotary has been uh, sensitive to their needs. And so we try to help them with uh, the things that they need. And they've been very supportive of our projects and the things that we need. So it's, it's been a great partnership. Now, I heard that they also do the composting portion of that and bring that back into uh, recycling as a uh, planter mix, I would say, for landscape projects. They do have, uh, they do have, uh, uh, they do have that type of program, and the waste company also has that program, and those end up getting, um, I think, sent to Santa Maria, but there is definitely a component of, of composting. Right now, it's, it's very heavily regulated, and so how it gets handled and where it gets handled, how it gets transported is, is regulated. And that's an area where, you know, we need to take a look and see what we can do to make things easier for the uh, service clubs to, to get involved with. Sounds good. Well, that's pretty fascinating. And I could see where the eco clubs actually fit in well to Rotary as a model because of the awareness that you bring to not only the environment, but also serving as mentors, guiding for different groups, organization, and the youth. And that's outstanding, things that I really didn't think about. I see why you're fascinated about that and why you started these other two clubs. I'm sure you've been instrumental in both of those. And I could see now also that you're gonna have a very successful year as a governor, so we're gonna to have to have you back for that one. I look forward to that. Very good. Well, with that, uh, we're pretty much out of time. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, take a look at the Eco Clubs and see how you yourself can make a difference in the environment and how we live, how the community works, and look at Rotary because they're making huge strides and making this possible so that we will have a good life for a long time. Thank you very much, and we will see you at the next show.